How's it going guys? Rockstar Gaming here. This is a video by Tracycle, the Five Nights at Freddy's storyline. There is some strong language in here. So, um, yeah. Um, I'm just gonna let you guys watch this and then end the video. So, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Boop. You thought it was over. You thought I was done. You thought there was nothing left to say. Actually, you didn't think that at all, did you? Because we have thousands of comments asking us every question you could possibly think of to clarify just what the hell happened in Five Nights at Freddy's. So I, Grant the Grantabulous, am going to take the time to flesh out all the kinks of what you wonderful people might have missed, misunderstood, or just needed some clarification on. I'm also going to give you some information that will bring the entire Five Nights at Freddy's storyline together, so that everything that seems slightly out of place will all fall together. So get your pens out and your ears open, cause I'm about to spray my knowledge sauce all over you with the story. You never do. So let's get into it. Last time I explained my reasoning for why I believe that we play as Purple Guy in Sister Location, and why Purple Guy is innocent because of his body being taken over by... Entered. In case you missed either of those videos, you can take a look at them by clicking the I button in the top right corner of the screen. I definitely recommend watching them if you haven't already, since I'm not going to be going over everything we covered in those bad boys. Or if you've already seen them, maybe you'd like a refresher. It has been a few weeks. So go do that now. Or don't, it's a free country. Now, let's delve back into the games and take a look at what you guys are asking about. Okay, so first off, I saw this question asked over and over again. How can the purple guy be who we play as in Sister Location if he gets killed at the end of Five Nights at Freddy's 3? Alright, I totally understand why so many of you were asking about this, because Scott decided to make the games completely out of chronological order. Damn, you're confusing yet oh so intriguing storyline, Scott! <sighs> So let's go over the timeline really quickly. We have Five Nights at Freddy's 4, which takes place at the beginning of the timeline. We know this because we only have two animatronics, Golden Freddy and Golden Bonnie. Both these animatronics are also Springlock suits, since we can see them being used by employees. We know that this is the start of the Five Nights at Freddy's timeline because Golden Freddy or Golden Bonnie or both make appearances in all other games where they are out of commission. Therefore, Five Nights at Freddy's 4 has to come first in the timeline because it has the golden suits in working order and there are no other animatronics. Next, we have Sister Location. We can tell Sister Location is next for a few reasons. First of all, we see Funtime Foxy as a working animatronic. Funtime Foxy then appears in Five Nights at Freddy's 2 as Mangle, where it appears completely broken. So Sister Location has to come before Five Nights at Freddy's 2, but after Five Nights at Freddy's 4. After Five Nights at Freddy's 2, the toy animatronics are decommissioned and the large pizza establishment is shut down. Then, a smaller establishment is opened, which is the location of Five Nights at Freddy's 1. Here we get the plush animatronics instead of the toy ones. Then, years later, we have the setting of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, which is the last in the franchise. We know this because FNAF 3's setting is in an amusement park attraction that is all about the atrocities that happened to the Fazbear franchise. So it has to come after the rest of the games. To clarify one more time, the timeline goes FNAF FNAF 4, Sister Location, FNAF 2, FNAF 1, and finally, FNAF 3. Now that that's been cleared up, we clearly see Purple Guy get into the Spring Bonnie suit during one of the Five Nights at Freddy's 3 minigames. These events happened after the events of Sister Location in the timeline, so there's nothing wrong with the storyline from that angle. Purple Guy becomes Ennard. Then, years later, gets chased into the spring bonnie suit by ghost children. And then, as the spring locks come loose, the purple guy becomes Springtrap. It all lines up perfectly. So yes, Springtrap is an animatronic inside a human body inside an animatronic. Did you ever see Inception? Yeah, it's like that, but with things that make me go, HOLY DICK POTAMUS! Hmm, so what's next? Ah uh, oh yes, many, many of you asked the related question, but how can Purple Guy be an animatronic when we see him bleed in FNAF 3? Oh baby, you really thought you had me good with this question, didn't you? You were all like, ha, gotcha Grant, your theory is wrong and your channel is stupid and I bet your penis is shaped like a pine cone. Well, 
We'll see who has a penis shaped like a pine cone after this! What if I told you that I had not just one, but three possible answers to that question? I, I do, I, I have three possible answers. So let's get into them, like your dad got into your mom with his pine cone dick. Boom, I just went there, bazinga! Pinecone jokes aside, the golden bonnie suit that purple guy gets into has clearly been in that pizzeria for a while. We can tell because the pizzeria itself is horribly run down. Things are broken, there are rats scurrying around the floor, and the ceiling is leaking. Obviously, when the owners closed up shop, they left the bonnie suit there. And there it's been until the purple guy put it on. And have you seen what happens to metal that is left alone in wet areas for a long period of time? It begins to rust! I don't know if you've been around a lot of rust, but when there's a lot of rust and a lot of water, the water takes on this gross orangish reddish color that you wouldn't want coming out of your Capri Sun, much less your sink. You know what else that reddish water looks like? Blood. That red liquid coming out of the spring trap suit could just be a mixture of water and rust getting pushed out as the spring locks close in on the deteriorating metal. But real talk for a second. While this is plausible, I think it's the weakest of the possible explanations. And remember, we still have two more of those. The next possible explanation for purple guy bleeding and it actually being blood is really quite simple. During the secret ending, Baby says, you won't die and it will only hurt for a moment. While referring to Ennard getting inside of you, if she's telling the truth, and she's told us the truth the rest of the game, when we get scooped, William Afton never actually died. Parts of him were taken out to make room for Ennard, but certain parts of Afton were left inside his skin. So when the Springlock suit fails at the end of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, we may very well be seeing the death of what was left of Afton. Any leftover organs or body parts that were alive got killed and smashed, hence the massive amounts of blood. Another theory, which is closely related to the last one, is that William Afton's skin was kept alive somehow to keep up the appearance of Ennard being a person. This has to be the case if we're to believe that Ennard was able to convincingly pose as a human. I mean, you're not a very believable human if your skin is rotting off. I don't know if you've ever pricked your thumb with a needle before, but skin has blood in it. So when the spring lock suit crushed Purple Guy's skin, the blood within the skin spilled out, resulting in the red puddle we see. But do you see the point? Just because we see a pool of blood doesn't mean that Ennard wasn't inside of Purple Guy already. And in fact, you'll soon see that it makes even more sense with the rest of the story. So, there's multiple explanations for why there's a pool of blood when the spring locks go off on Purple Guy. And it makes sense that with the spring locks broken, Ennard is now trapped in the spring bonnie suit. So when we see Spring Trap in Five Nights at Freddy's 3, that's just Ennard trapped inside the spring bonnie suit, trying to get your skin so we can continue hiding. And this might not even be the end of the story! At the end of Five Nights at Freddy's 3, if you brighten up the picture in the newspaper, we see Spring Trap in the background, meaning he's still alive. You're telling me a regular human could go through losing that much blood, then get stuck in a burning building and still survive? I don't think so. And that's because it's not a human. It's an animatronic. Ennard, in Purple Guy's skin, gets crushed in the spring bonnie suit. The blood can be explained as rust or leftover innards of William Afton or Purple Guy's skin bleeding. But the spring locks couldn't crush Ennard as he's made of metal. So he haunts Fazbear's fright, trying to get another human skin to hide in. And when it burns down, he survives because he's not a human. Hopefully that cleared up all the misconceptions conceptions about just how that puddle of blood came to be. But there's something more, isn't there? Haven't you noticed the entire franchise seems to have pieces that don't quite fit? The entire Five Nights at Freddy's storyline, Five Nights at Freddy's 1 through 4, the book, and sister location, just don't piece together perfectly. And that's because they aren't supposed to. When Five Nights at Freddy's 4 came out, Scott wrote that it was the final chapter of the original storyline. The key words here are original storyline. Yet we clearly see direct connections between the first four FNAF games, the book and Sister Location. The intro of Sister Location references William Afton, who was revealed to be the purple guy in Silver Eyes for crying out loud. But there are things that just don't add up. For example, the purple guy's daughter is a fucking asshole in FNAF 4. She tells this scary story to scare her brother. 
But all the audio we have from the girl in sister location makes her sound super sweet and friendly. This shift in personality just doesn't make sense. Until you remember that Scott said FNAF 4 is the end of the original storyline. This leaves only one explanation for why there never seems to be enough pieces to finish the FNAF puzzle. The Five Nights at Freddy's universe has an alternate timeline. Sister Location and the novel Silver Eyes are on a different timeline than the rest of the games. And this isn't just me guessing here. Scott has said, the games are what they are, and as I stated before, that story is finished. The games in the book should be considered to be separate continuities, even if they do share many familiar elements. So yes, the book is canon, just as the games are. That doesn't mean that they are intended to fit together like two puzzle pieces. So if the book is canon, and the games are canon, but they have contradicting pieces of evidence that don't fit in the same universe, the only explanation is that there is more than one FNAF universe. He even says that we should think of them as separate continuities. This quote was from before Sister Location was released, so it's really hard to tell if Scott meant for Sister Location to be in the same universe as the novel, or if he's actually created three separate timelines. But if there are any discrepancies between the original games and Sister Location, it's because Scott doesn't think of them as being completely connected. Are they similar? Absolutely! Do they share a lot of the same history? Obviously. But that doesn't mean that everything should fit together perfectly. Because Scott didn't plan them to. So really, the best answer for why Purple Guy bleeds in Five Nights at Freddy's 3 when William Afton is already entered is that Scott decided to make a story that involves multiple universes. And he came up with the story of Ennard after the original storyline. He finished that story, but wanted to continue working in a Five Nights at Freddy's universe. So he made another one, not caring so much about whether or not every little detail would add up. Even though Scott knows his games will be scrutinized for plot holes by millions millions of fans. This is the saving grace of the Five Nights at Freddy's franchise that will keep Scott in the clear if plot holes pop up in any FNAF game past or future. So no matter how many questions we may have, how many pieces just don't quite fit, it really doesn't matter. If the creator decides that inconsistencies are okay, there's nothing we can do but put the puzzle together as best we can. So next time you spend days on end thinking about just how insanely complicated the Five Nights at Freddy's universe is, remember that even if you figure it all out, it will never fit perfectly. But that's the beauty of the games, isn't it? It allows us to work and rework ideas over and over to find out the best way they can fit, even if it's never perfect. So perhaps Scott's choice isn't so bad, maybe. It's really a blessing in disguise. And that's the story. You never knew. Hey, I'm sorry that I didn't get to answer all your questions, but we tried to get to the most important ones that were asked the most often. But there was one question asked a bajillion times that we didn't get to answer. Grant, what's your favorite morning drink? The answer is Coffeeist by Soylent. Do you get tired of having to both eat and drink in the morning? Maybe you need to run off to school and don't have time to grab a bite before you go. Well, the future is now, thanks to Coffeeist. Coffeeist is both your morning coffee and your breakfast on the go. So throw out that bagel, Mikey, because you're never going to need it again. Give Coffeeist a try by using the link in the description and get 15% off your first subscription while supporting the channel. Sponsors like Soylent help us make great content for you guys. So show them some love and get 15% off your first subscription by clicking that link. I love you guys, and I'll see you next time, where maybe we might totally have a surprise giveaway. No, I guess it's not a surprise anymore. But that's coming up next Thursday, so I'll see you then. So that was the video by Treesicle. I hope that cleared up any of your, um, what he said. So thank you guys so much for watching. See you in the next video.